Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Again, the Youth Board is making a special appeal for prizes for the golf outing on September the 21st, and these donations will help cut the cost for the event and allow for more of the proceeds to grow the scholarship fund at, for students at St. John's. And board members have a table in the atrium if you'd like more information about how to help. Uh, entry forms are on the main hall bulletin board, and don't hesitate to enter a single. Some others may need a player on their team. They may also come out for dinner. There is a spot on entry form to reserve a meal. And also tickets are on sale for the Mercy Me concert in Champaign in November. Uh, you can read the details on the, in your newsletter and sign up on the mail bulletin board and you pay in the church office. The Life Banquet, I believe it's May the 26th, will be held later uh, this month. If you'd like to attend, please sign up on the main hall bulletin board. And next week, uh, I'll have some ACLITE training uh, again. Uh, the incoming sixth graders as well as the seventh and eighth graders are to go through this training. In the past, we've only had the older class, but Pastor Burdick asked that the sixth grade participate as well. And in making my uh, calls, communion calls, one of the shut-ins who uh, watches uh, the church service each week uh, said, uh, could you ask the people to please sit down further to the front because sometimes it looks like there's only three or four people in church <laughs> because the front pews don't have anybody and says, think that would look better if it looked like more people were there. <laughs> so, so he asked me to pass that on. Let us begin our worship service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. By God's grace and peace, let us receive the full knowledge of everything that is in us for the sake of Christ. Father in heaven, in your mercy you call us to turn from our sinful ways and live. We confess that we have run of presence by what we have and what we fail to do. 
we have turned our backs on your love. Forgive us, Father. Draw us again to the cross of your Son, that we may be restored in our relationship with you. Father, hear now the silent prayers of confession that we bring to you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we are promised redemption and restoration in the presence of our Father who hears our prayers and for the sake of his Son forgives us all our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. My soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. Put false ways far from me and graciously teach me your law. I have chosen the way of faithfulness. I set your just decrees before me. I cling to your testimonies, O Lord. Let me not be put to shame. I will run in the way of your commandments when you enlarge my heart. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Make me understand the way of your precepts, and I will meditate on your wondrous works. Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory, to peace to all the earth. Good will from God in heaven, proclaim at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh, merciful Lord, you did not spare your only son, but delivered him up for us all. Even though we have run away from your presence, grant that we, restored into the fellowship of your family, share with others the forgiveness we from your hand receive. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the 13th Sunday after Pentecost is from the book of Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter, and we begin with the 15th verse. See, I set before you today life and prosperity, death and destruction. For I command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in obedience to him and to keep his commands, decrees, and laws. Then you will live and increase, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you are not obedient, and if you are drawn to 
a way to bow down to other gods and worship them, I declare to you this day that you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God. Listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle is from Paul's letter to Philemon. And while Paul was in prison, he penned a letter to Philemon and the church that met in his home, commending them for their love, encouragement, and faith. We begin with the first verse. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker, also to Aphia, our sister, and Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I care about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you, brother, have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Therefore, although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. It is as none other than Paul an old man and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus, that I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. I'm sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would like to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that any favor you do would not seem forced, but would be voluntary. Perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave, as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. I do wish, brother, that I may have some benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ, confident of your obedience. I write to you knowing that you will do even more than, than I ask. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise. Hallelujah, far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. This, the sermon text and the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Large crowds were traveling with Jesus and turning to them, he said, If anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. And whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? But if you lay the foundation and are not able to finish it, everyone who sees it will ridicule you, saying, this person began to build but wasn't able to finish. Or suppose a king is about to go to war against another king. Won't he first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 men to oppose the one coming against him with 20,000? If he is not able, he will send a delegation while the other is still a long way off and will ask for terms of peace. 
In the same way, those of you who do not give up everything you have cannot be my disciples. Salt is good, but if it loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is fit neither for the soil nor for the manure pile. It is thrown out. Whoever has ears to hear, let him he them hear. This is the gospel of our Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed is found on the inside of the back cover of your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in all things visible and invisible, and in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of God, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <laughs> mercy and peace be to you from our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and may his spirit open up our hearts and minds to his word amen 
Our text is the gospel reading. is found in Luke 14. In our text, Jesus tells his listeners, those who have been following him, that there is a cost to being his disciple, to being a follower of his. Many people of, who were following Jesus because he brought them a good health program, you might say, or he fed their tummies. And they liked that. Yes, they heard the word, but they followed him because of the blessings they were receiving from Jesus. But he had come for a greater purpose than just bringing that physical healing and feeding people. He came to restore our spiritual relationship with God, a something that we could not do for ourselves. And listen to what he says to the crowds that are following him. He says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciples. He said, wow. Does that mean we should emotionally hate our moms and dads, our brothers and sisters, and our friends and neighbors? You know, God's word does say, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer hath eternal life uh, abiding in him. And again it says in 1 John, If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he, does not love his, he who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And didn't Jesus say, love your neighbor as yourself? Well, this word hate used here is not talking about how we emotionally feel toward other people. But it is referring to more important than. That, in other words, I love you more than. And Jesus is saying that if you're going to be my disciples, you must love me more than your moms and dads, your brothers and your sisters, and yes, even yourself. And that's the way God created us to be in the beginning. For Adam and Eve, before they fell into sin, loved God with all their heart, with all their soul, and with all their mind. And they certainly loved their neighbor as themselves. Following Jesus, being his disciple, carries with it a cost. Jesus said, whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And what is the cost for many people. Well, a few years ago, there was a young Muslim girl who had become a Christian in the United States. And her parents wanted to go back to their home country, and she did not want to go. And she wanted to stay here because she knew that she would possibly be put to death or face all kinds of punishment because she was no longer of the same faith and religion. And just think about Saul before he became a Christian. He was praised by the Jewish people and the Judaizers for going out and putting to death Christians. But when he became a Christian, he became one who was persecuted. He was hated and despised by the very people who praised him before. And Paul was willing to suffer that and even to bring the message of hope and salvation to a people that he loved even though they hated him. You may find yourself also being ridiculed if you stand up for Jesus and you say in our society today that there is only one way of salvation. There is no other ways. That there is no other name under heaven among men whereby we can be saved except at the name of Jesus. Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And when we proclaim the truths of God's word against sin, we can expect people to despise us and to hate us. But Jesus said that would happen. He even said... They will hate you without cause. As I've read the Voice of Martyrs magazine, I read story after story of people after they became Christians that they are hated by 
their own families in some cases. They lose their jobs. They endure all kinds of hardships. But there is a cost to being a disciple of Jesus Christ. And even the early Christian uh, apostles, when you read this, their stories of their life, only John uh, was uh, put on the Isle of Patmos and all the rest of them died a martyr's death because they believed in Jesus. Some of them were torn apart by lions. Some of them sawed in half. Some of them burned at flames at stake. And tradition has it that Peter was crucified on a cross upside down. But these were things they were willing to do because of their love for Jesus. They loved Jesus more than they loved their own life. They loved Jesus more than their own families because he was the one who had given them a new life that was forever. Many times you and I have sung uh, songs like Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated Lord to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in Jesus' praise. Or, or that the Lord would guide my ways to keep his statutes still. Oh, that my God would grant me grace to know and do his will. And we say that, but then we can go out into the world. And we live like the rest of the world. Unfortunately, we often walk in our own ways. And God created us that we might live for him, not for self. Adam and Eve, when they were created, were put in such a perfect world. And... They would have lived forever, but they chose to disobey God. And they changed the beauty of their life to that which brings misery and pain and separation from God. Sin causes many hardships for people. Now the created things, instead of worshiping the Creator, begins to worship and seek after worldly things and worship and love those worldly things more than they love their creator and this kind of thing causes us to be self-indulgent as we all look at our own life sometimes we begin to focus upon well if we have enough money then my life will be better and there's nothing wrong with having money and having a better life but that becomes our goal in life, even at the expense of forgetting about God and putting him first in our life. And we must die to self, Jesus says, when we follow him. And sometimes we, people have become guilty of worshiping false gods in their life, the gods of TV, sports, uh, uh, money. Uh, the list could go on and on. And... The thing is that we just are putting them first above God. And whenever we do that, that brings us troubles in our lives. Uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 19, whoever keeps the commandments uh, keeps his life. He who despises his God's ways will die. And if we are honest, I think we all have to say we have been caught up in so often in the ways of the world and not putting Christ first. I don't know about you, but there are times I, from time to time I pray, Dear Lord, deliver me from me. Help me to walk with you. And we need to be delivered from ourselves because as much as we love Jesus, we so often get sidetracked by the temptations of Satan. To put other things ahead of him. And we need to ask ourselves. If we are confronted with death. Because of our faith in Jesus. Will we deny him? Or will we say. If you must take my life so be it. I will continue to believe in Jesus as my personal savior and Lord. And there is no hope. For anyone outside of him. Christ himself. Was the one alone. Who walked that perfect life. 
that God wants us to live. He was obedient in all things. The Bible tells us, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. And the Bible says that he was tempted in every way that we are tempted, yet he never ever sinned. He loved his father more than he loved his mom and his brothers and sisters, and even more than himself. He loved all of us when he came into this world. You could say more than himself because he was willing to give his very life for all of our wrongdoing. And we didn't deserve that. But he willingly went to the cross. And in the book of Hebrews it says, for the joy of the cross. And when I read those words, I always wonder, how could Jesus even see anything in the cross that was joyful? The pain, the suffering, the rejection, the bitterness heaped against him. But the joy was that he saw you and he saw me. He saw our sinfulness and how we could do nothing to make ourselves acceptable to God. And he was willing to pay the price to set us free. He paid our debt and we don't deserve it. But we can only say thank you for it and pray, dear Jesus, help me to be faithful to you. To help me be willing to suffer with you as I live for you. Help me to know that as we live in this world, the United States of America, it appears that our day is coming of persecution in America. There are more and more people speaking out against Christianity and not liking the message of the cross. And we need to pray, Lord, Please help me to be bold to confess Jesus. Help me to share the message of the cross with these people who are going to be lost forever. Give me a love for them no matter what they do to me as you had a love for all of us when you hung on the cross and said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Fill me with your grace and the wonderful joy of knowing that we're forgiven. We're God's people. And that no matter what happens to us, we have a wonderful place in glory awaiting us, given to us by God's grace through faith in Jesus. To God be the glory. Great things he has done, so loved he the world. He gave us his son. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasseth all understanding, Keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now receive our... Paul writes, I thank my God always when I remember you in my prayers because I hear of your love and of the faith you have toward the Lord Jesus and all the saints. United in love and faith, let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
for the gospel of Jesus Christ to reach into every corner of our broken world, that all who are running away from our Heavenly Father turn from the path that leads to destruction, and by the Holy Spirit turn to Jesus for redemption and restoration. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, strengthen us to turn to you in repentance and faith. For all those within the church of Jesus, both clergy and laity, that we join as one to share the restoring word of Jesus with those who are sent to serve embodying the spirit of Paul's word to Philemon, that the sharing of our faith may become effective for the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, grant that we know all the good things that come to us as we share your word. For all those who seek restoration with others, that the message of forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation not only be received in humble faith, but also shared within the relationships we have, knowing that every one of us is dependent upon Christ's mercy and love, let us pray to the Lord. Father, help us to extend to others the mercy you receive from me. For all who labor in positions of service and leadership in our country, state, and local community, including the members of the armed forces, that they know the constant protection of, your, of our gracious God and joyfully serve others in the vocations they have been given, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. Serving in the lives of others. And dear Heavenly Father, we thank you that this day is celebrated as Grandparents Day and we ask your blessing upon all those who are grandparents and may they continue to be an example of your love and caring for other people. And we also thank you for that Pastor Burdick has accepted the call to be pastor here at St. John's and we look forward to his installation. And we ask also that you would be with him as his family moves to this area. And we ask that you would also be with the college students and the congregation uh, that he is presently at and assure them of uh, your caring for them and that you will provide them with a servant who will feed them spiritually. We ask your blessings upon all these things and we pray to you. And for all who are broken in heart, body, and mind, and relationship, including those who are shut in hospital and care centers, awaiting surgery and recovering from medical procedures, we bring to you, O oh Lord, those on our prayer list. Be with Elder Klitzing, who has had a stroke and is at the Springfield Hospital. Be with Cindy Esch, who is recovering from her surgery. Be with Craig Wolf, a cancer patient. Be with Chuck Mayberry, recovering from his heart surgery, and Nick Miller, who is a cancer patient, and Craig Wolf, who is dealing with chemo uh, treatments. Be with Dave Frower, a cancer patient, and be with uh, Ralph Stuckmeyer, Cheryl Prummer's dad, and Gerald Prummer, uh, and Jerry Prummer's dad, and be with Katie Ziegler, who is recovering from her surgery, and also Howard Hake, who is recovering from surgery and is at Lakeland. And we ask also that you'd be with all others that we know and our families, our neighbors, and our friends uh, that are in need of your healing touch. We pray that the Lord would refresh the hearts of his saints and work mightily for their good. Let us pray to the Lord. Father, grant healing and refreshment to all for whom we pray. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend ourselves and all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, for the blessings you freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for the redemptive love shown to us when you sent your one and only Son into our flesh and laid on him our sin, handing him over to death that we might not die eternally. All who have run away from your presence are welcomed anew into your arms and of mercy through the restoring work of Jesus Christ. Therefore, with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your righteous judgment you condemned the sin of Adam and Eve, who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and made his cross the source of restoration for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the saving work of Jesus, by which we are restored as those who once had run away from you, but now return to you in repentance and faith. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped. When he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. This true body and this true blood strengthen you and preserve you in the one true faith unto life eternal. Go in his peace. Please rise. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have restored, renewed, and refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. 
Grace go with you and peace flow through you. For they are gifts from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. By God's grace and peace, we have been blessed with the full knowledge of every good thing that is in us for the sake of Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his favor upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.